what we have, it looks like, is we have um, a, <clears throat> a lift. So I'm going to draw a lift. Or let's say we've got something like that. And it's carrying some type of, it's carrying some bricks. Okay, so let's draw some bricks. And this lift is busy moving upwards. It's busy moving upwards at a constant velocity. Okay. And let's also draw, let's also draw in the ground for ourselves. So here's the ground. And what they tell us is that a lift carrying building material is moving upwards at a constant velocity. It is moving alongside an 80 meter high building. Okay, so we've got this big building that's 80 meters tall. So let's draw that for ourselves quickly. Um, let's draw the building. Actually, let me just do something here, guys. I'm just gonna take all of this and I'm just gonna move this a little bit down and then we can draw our building. So let's draw a nice blue building. Okay, and that building has a total height of uh, 80 meters, they tell us. Okay, and then it says that it's moving alongside an 80 meter high building at a height of 48 meters above the ground, a brick falls. So at a height of 48 meters above the ground, a brick is going to fall. So let's put this height over here as 48 meters. And let's say that this brick over here is going to fall. Okay. But let me maybe not draw it like that because, yeah. So this brick um, is going to fall. This one here will fall. Right. Then it says that the brick is going to hit the ground after four seconds. Okay. So that journey is going to take four seconds. So you, what you guys must remember is that um, this is very important, what I'm about to say right now. You know that this piece over here, this lift, is busy moving upwards, right? When the brick falls, it is going to also move upwards for a little bit, okay? Just for a little bit. So it's going to go up like this, and then it's going to fall. In real life, you won't see it because it happens so fast. So it looks like the brick is just falling, but it actually goes up a little bit with the same velocity as the lift was moving, okay? And now this whole journey is going to take four seconds. Now it says that if the lift continues in an upward motion, and remember that the lift is moving at a constant velocity, it says calculate how long after it's started to fall, how long will it take the brick to reach a point which is 20 meters below the lift? Okay. So they are looking for a situation so, okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to quickly um, select. I'm going to select all of this stuff over here. And I don't think I can make a copy. No, I can't make a copy of that. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm just thinking how I'm going to draw the next part for you guys so that it looks nice and neat. I don't want this to be untidy. Okay, so this is going to be um, the start. Okay, and then and then what's going to happen now is, let's do this. Let's draw our building again. Over time, we must understand that that, that lift is going to be a little bit higher, right? It's going to be higher up, and it's going to have the three bricks now. It won't have all four bricks. And um, the other brick is going to be somewhere over here because it fell, remember, it fell. And they wanna know, they wanna know how long, how long will it take until the distance between the lift 
and the brick is 20 meters. So that distance must be 20 meters. So let's quickly go fill that in. Twenty meters. Okay, I think that's all that we need. Okay, guys. So what we need to calculate now is how long is it going to take until until um, and this is at the end. How long is it going to take until the brick and the lift are going to be twenty meters apart? Okay. Now remember that the lift is busy moving up and the brick is gonna fall down. So the, the, we have two things that are moving here. The lift is moving up and the brick is also moving down. That's what makes this question very interesting. Okay. Now, the first thing that I think we should try do guys, because earlier on, you see how they told us that the upwards velocity is going to be, um, they said that the, the, the lift is moving at a constant velocity. So if we can go calculate the velocity of that lift, then we know what speed it's moving because they said it's moving at a constant velocity. So the way that we could do that is the following. Remember what I told you over here. I told you that when that brick falls, it will have the same velocity. It will have the same initial velocity as the lift. Okay. So let's go calculate. Let's go calculate what the initial velocity of this brick was. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we are going to try and calculate the initial velocity. Now you can use equations of motion, and I think the best one is going to be this one over here. Now you might use a G in the formula, or some of you might even use a Y over here. I'm not too worried about that. You guys shouldn't be too worried. You must just use whichever one you are comfortable with. Okay. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a direction as positive. So maybe I think I'll choose downwards as positive for this one. So guys, here we go. We're moving, we're saying downwards as positive. You see, because the brick first goes up and then it goes all the way down. So how far down does it go? It goes 48 meters. So I'm going to put a 48 over here. What is the original velocity of the brick? We don't know. That's what we're trying to calculate. How long does it take to do the 48 meters? It takes four seconds. Some of you might be saying, Kevin, when are we going to use the 20 meters? Guys, we're not doing that now. We're just first getting a little bit of other information first. And then we're going to say plus a half. Now, acceleration due to gravity is 9.8, and it's 9.8 down and we chose down as positive and then we're going to put the time again as four squared so what we can now do is we can take this equation and we can solve for initial velocity okay and that's the initial velocity of the brick but it's also the initial velocity of the lift because they will have the same initial velocities perfect so now i can say 48 is equal to four V initial. This part, I'm just going to type on my calculator quickly. And that's going to give us 78.4. I'm then going to take the 78.4 over to the other side. So that's negative 30.4. Then I'm going to divide by four. Don't worry about the negative answer. It means something quite important. I'll explain that now. Okay, so we get a negative answer. All that that means is the following. We chose downwards as positive, but we got a negative answer. So that means that the initial velocity of that brick and the lift would have been 7.6 meters per second in an upwards direction. Okay, so we now know that the brick has an initial velocity of 
0.6, and so does the lift, okay? So we can say velocity of lift is equal to 7.6, and the original Well, let's say the initial velocity of the brick is also equal to 7.6 up and up. Okay, so that's the first part that we need to understand, that the brick has an init initial velocity of 7.6 meters per second. Okay, so now what we can now do is the following. We now know that the lift the lift is just going to keep moving upwards at a constant velocity, right? So remember, guys, that when a lift moves at a constant velocity, it has a zero acceleration. So I want to show you guys something now. I'm going to show you two different things. Um, I'm going to show you... I'm going to show you what the lift is going to do, and I'm going to try to show you what the brick is going to do. So that lift is just going to keep moving upwards constantly at 7.6 meters per second. So what would the distance or what would the displacement of that lift be? Well, we could calculate that one's displacement. I'm going to choose upwards as positive because it is moving upwards. That just makes, you don't have to do that, but it just makes our life a lot easier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this formula over here for the lift. Well, let's put an A, sorry. Okay. And so if I go for everything in there, I can say that the displacement of the lift will be its initial velocity, which is 7.6. Now the time, guys, now we are moving on to the second part of the question. We would like to know how long will it take until these two are 20 meters apart. So now I'm not going to use the time as four seconds. That was just to help me with the first part of the question. Now I'm on to the second part, which wants to know how long will it take until they're 20 meters apart. So I'm going to put the time as T. Then I'm going to say plus a half. If you, had to, if you had to put the acceleration of the lift, we know that it's zero. And so this whole part of the formula disappears. And so check this out, guys. We can now see that this is actually just the distance, speed, and time formula. You know, distance is equal to speed multiplied by time because the acceleration part has fallen away. And so now we are almost using our grade 9 and 10 science formulas of speed and distance and time. Okay. So what we'll say then for the, for the lift is that delta x is going to be 7.6 multiplied by t. So now I'm going to talk about the brick. But now what I'm going to do is because the brick moves downwards, I'm going to choose downwards as positive for the brick. Okay? It just makes our calculation so much better. And I'm going to use the exact same formula for this one. Okay, I'm going to use the same formula, and I'm going to say delta x for the brick. Now, it also has the same initial velocity as the lift, so that was 7.6. However, in the, for the brick, its initial velocity was 7.6 meters up, meters per second up, but I've chosen downwards as positive for the brick, and so I'm going to have to put the ve initial velocity as negative 7.6, and then I'm going to say time, which I don't know, and then I'm going to say plus half. Now, the gravity, I can say that it's positive 9.8. Why? Because I chose downwards as positive, and the lift is, I mean, the brick is also going to be moving, um, or the acceler sorry, I chose downwards as positive, and acceleration is always acting downwards because of gravity, and then I can put the t squared over here. Now, all I have to do, guys, is I just need to say that the displacement that the, the lift moved plus, so if I go the displacement of the lift plus the displacement of the brick, 
I just want to work out where would those be 20 meters apart. You see, so the distance that the lift has gone up plus the distance that the brick has gone down, I would like to add those two together and make the final answer a 20 because then it shows that they are 20 meters apart from each other. So all I'm going to do now is just fill in those different formulas. So for the, for the lift, I used 7.6 T. And then for the brick, I used uh, this part over here. So that's going to be negative 7.6 T uh, plus a half times 9.8 T squared. And that should be equal to 20. And so now if we try to solve this thing, what we would see is that these two parts here would cancel out. And so we would end up with this part over here. And so that would just be um, 4.9 T squared equals 20. And so T squared would be equal to 20 over 4.9. And so if I take the square root, we should end up with a final answer of 2.02 .02 seconds.